Hey y'all, TRG here, and in this video we'll be talking about the potential for a tropical cyclone as we go towards the middle portion of next week in the western main development region of the Atlantic, as well as going over the remnants of Tropical Storm Bud in the eastern Pacific. Let's go right on into today's video. Starting out here with the GFS 700 millibar height vorticity, we're going to go in and pull this out to July 29th, where we're going to start to see a little bit of a vorticity blob here in the central main development region, and we're going to watch this as it tries to progress towards the Lesser Antilles as we go towards the middle portion of this upcoming week and you can see this goes into the northern lesser antilles by the time we go towards about august first and this is just one model run the gfs model run wants this to go towards cuba and then eventually into the yucatan peninsula and the southwest gulf of mexico i do think that is a little bit of a unrealistic scenario the more realistic scenario is depicted by the european model here this is last night's 00z model run and as we pull this on into the same time frame july 28th july 29th right around that time you'll see this little vorticity blob right in the exact same area as the gfs this is going into july 30th and now watch what the European does with it. This is way more realistic. I don't really want to take into account the GFS just because it's it's just not going to be handling this system. Well, I can already tell that from the get-go. The European takes us into the uh, portion of southeastern Bahamas as we go into August 1st, which if you recall, the GFS had it in generally the same area, but a little bit more south on August 1st. And then if we go ahead and go into August 3rd, look at that. We've got a tropical storm on our hands, according to the European model here on the afternoon and evening of August 3rd. Now, this is just one model run. However, it is a model run that we have to take into account and take it seriously. Only reason why is because a lot of model data from the European and also now the National Hurricane Center is catching on this are showing the potential for U.S. impacts. Now, we are far out to the point where I would not be worrying about this system, but if I'm anywhere in this vicinity here in the U.S., I would make sure that hurricane preparedness plan is ready to go, ready to be put in action just in case this thing does actually form into a storm around August 1st. I'll keep you guys updated here consistently throughout this upcoming week. And again, just playing that European model once again, that little vorticity blob on the 29th east of the Lesser Antilles goes into the uh, southeastern Bahamas towards the first and then begins to form into a tropical storm near the florida peninsula as we go towards august 3rd here and august 4th uh, eventually moves right on into um mississippi and alabama's go towards the fourth and the fifth uh, again the intensity of this storm is a big old question mark the track is uh, a little bit set in stone here the reason why i say that is because we have such a high pressure built in see this high pressure built in uh, towards the 30th we should have a high pressure right in this general vicinity and that should really allow the steering current to be right on into uh you know florida maybe maybe as far to the northeast uh as like north carolina maybe even south carolina uh, but i think the most likely scenario this high pressure forms we get a little bit of a blob that forms it moves into the gulf uh, and then i do think that there is a very real possibility that we see a tropical storm develop towards august 3rd in the eastern gulf of mexico again still far out uh, but that is a very realistic scenario uh, like i pointed out just a bit ago the gfs model has this blob going towards the uh yucatan peninsula and then eventually into mexico before we go on into the rest of today's video i ask that you guys please go ahead and like and share this video with your family friends as well as on social media and if you're new to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button with notification bell set to all so you know when i go live or upload a video let's go right back on into today's video before we dive back on into our ensemble model runs, I want to go ahead and show you guys just briefly the National Hurricane Center. They already have a 20% chance for tropical development as this storm moves towards, of course, the exact same areas I have mentioned. Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Haiti, and as well as Cuba in the southeastern Bahamas. And like I said, we're going to have that high pressure that builds in in this general vicinity, and it's... It should fling it just like this right on into the Gulf of Mexico. You can see how they don't really uh, account for the possibility of this storm going towards like the Yucatan Peninsula. They do have that 20% uh, chance towards Jamaica just in case, uh, but definitely a more likely scenario that this storm just heads right towards Florida and into the eastern Gulf and or uh, the extreme far west central Atlantic out in this vicinity. So here is the Eastern Pacific, and we do have a 30% chance for tropical development for the next seven days in this yellow area and tropical storm bud that is currently beginning to die out and should be a depression at the next advisory. All right, so here's your European Ensemble member guidance, and you can see most of these European ensembles are starting to detect the potential for a tropical wave as this goes just barely to the east of the northern Lesser Antilles. Like I said, fairly good agreement that this heads right up towards Florida and then eventually goes into either kind of western Florida, uh, Georgia, maybe even as far as Mississippi. There is some models that still show this, or some ensembles, I should say, that still show this going into the Yucatan Peninsula uh, and into the western Gulf of Mexico, but with 
that strong high pressure. It should be a straightforward steering current generally along this vicinity here. So just make sure you're keeping a very close eye out on these model runs, very close eye on specifically that National Hurricane Center because uh, they'll give you the best information. The National Hurricane Center basically looks at all the models and all the data and they give you a very easy to understand pinpoint percentage and or, you know, the wind speeds of the storm or whatnot. So stay, stay very close and stay tuned to that National Hurricane Center website. Uh, probably checking it, I'd say at least uh, three to five times a day just to make sure you get that latest information because those probabilities will be rising as we go closer. Uh, again, the European model does take this right towards Florida, Georgia, uh, and you can see some of these yellow uh, tracks here. That's a hurricane. One of them has it being a Category 1, Category 2 hurricane uh, towards Bermuda, which I don't really see that being a possibility thanks to that high pressure. Uh, and then another Category 1 hurricane out here uh, west of Bermuda. But I don't really see these ensembles as a possibility. Um, you know, this is going to be like your least likely scenarios right here. As we see this thing go towards the Yucatan and we see this thing go west of Bermuda. That's kind of your least likely scenario uh, ordeal there. And then your most likely scenario is right in the middle generally in this vicinity here. Hence why the National Hurricane Center has that 20% uh, almost where I drew this, uh, this shape here. So just continue to monitor it. Uh, remember that we are still far out. A lot of things are going to change. There's no, there's no reason to uh, panic. I've already seen a lot of hype of this thing being a category three hurricane. Uh, please don't don't even listen to that at the moment. Now, uh, if we come to that scenario, you know, if we're looking at category three, then we can talk about it once that scenario comes around. But uh, at this point, this looks like a potential tropical depression to tropical storm impacting the southeastern United States. But it is that time of year. It is hurricane season uh, where we can see these rapid intensification phases. But the good news is uh, you'll notice that this should stay relatively in a, a bit of a um, uh, wonky track. I'll just call it that uh, where it stays over land so there shouldn't be much of an opportunity for this thing to intensify uh, in this area here by any means so uh, it's going to fully depend on the course of this thing uh, may intensify in the eastern gulf it may intensify in the western atlantic we'll just have to keep a very close eye on it and uh, i'll keep you guys posted throughout like i said the middle portion of next week Here's your uh, GEFS ensembles, your GFS ensembles here. And um, yeah, it, it's it's pretty quiet, to be honest with you. Um, it shows barely anything occurring. But again, I really am not trusting the GFS with this system. It typically is pretty trash at tropical systems. So I'm really just discarding it completely and almost all together. But uh, there is a scenario where this, you know, kind of does absolutely nothing. That's a very, very real possibility. Uh, so we'll just keep an eye on the GFS and see if it manages to get on the same track as the European eventually. So here's your European precipitation type for the next couple of days. We're going to go ahead and pull this out. July 28th, you can see that low pressure beginning to be a little bit of an interest there uh, towards 11 p.m. on July 28th, according to the European model. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of uncertainty until this system goes towards like Jamaica and uh, southeastern Bahamas. I don't really see much of a potential of this thing forming until it gets towards the southeastern Bahamas, Cuba, and Jamaica, uh, just because it it doesn't seem like it's going to have much of a run for its money there until there you go right around this time frame of august 1st right when it gets towards this vicinity here so august 1st that's when we should know a lot more information about this system and there's a low pressure as we go towards august 2nd august 3rd and august 4th fourth we get a tropical storm so a lot a lot better model data and a lot more information could uh, or rather should be through by the time we go towards um cuba and uh, jamaica that kind of vicinity right here so just keep an eye on it uh, lesser antilles uh, haiti jamaica uh, you guys should just be preparing for some rain maybe some isolated uh, gusty winds but it doesn't seem like much of an issue at this moment it seems just like an ordinary tropical wave uh, it shouldn't be anything too big it might might be quite the interesting ordeal as it goes towards Florida, uh, Georgia, and uh, maybe even the Carolinas as well. So uh, main takeaway from this video, just to do a recap, I like to do this at the end for those who kind of can't follow along as well. Uh, the European model is handling this system well. The GFS model, you might as well toss into the trash can because it's garbage at the moment. This system should not be an issue before Jamaica. Uh, before Jamaica, there's not a lot of confidence. There's barely any model runs or anything showing that it will be impacts for like the Lesser Antilles, Leeward Islands, 
just some rain and some gusty winds. A lot of uncertainty beyond August 1st, but beyond August 1st, we should be looking at a potential tropical storm. Uh, if, if we manage to see those conditions come together, as well as that high pressure not being too far off to the northeast and not being too far to the southwest. Uh, so should see the potential for a tropical storm threat as we go towards the uh, portion uh, or the time frame of August 2nd all the way to like August 5th. So I just want to continue to mention that you need to be paying attention to the National Hurricane Center about three to five times per day, making sure that you're uh, just checking in frequently every time they update. And also make sure that hurricane preparedness plan is ready to go just in case we do need to put it into action if you are out there in the southeastern portion of the United States. That is going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy and I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay safe. Watch severe weather in the tropics. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.